joining us on the Person to Person Network. Welcome to Profiles in STEM. Our career series will feature an amazing STEM professional who is shaping lives and building the future. I'm your host, Katie Colbert, and joining me today, we have a woman in STEM, Ms. Pamela Strader. Ms. Strader is Director of Global Technical Operations and Veterinary Sciences at Bristol Myers Squibb. Ms. Strader, welcome to our program. Ms. Strader, can we step back in time and go back to a particular moment when you decided to pursue a career in STEM? Sure. That's a great question. So as a child, I always wanted to work with animals. Ideally, I would be a veterinarian. Unfortunately, I didn't realize how hard it was to get into veterinary school and the amount of money that it would cost to get into to, to actually take classes in school. So given that situation and those limiting factors for me, I didn't think that there were other options. So I just decided to target my associate's degree in science and just leave it in a broad based uh, education uh, specialty. So I took a job in a very small not-for-profit organization uh, that was conducting biomedical research and I fell in love with it immediately. I enjoyed helping um, bringing medicines to market. I enjoyed helping the medical doctors uh, work on new models in, in their tests. And I felt like I was really contributing to human health as well as animal well being. So that's when it really got a hold of me initially. Um, I'm really glad that you got to be able to do something that you wanted to do. Uh, even though it wasn't originally what you had planned, you still were able to do something that you love. And I think that's really amazing. So now that you have both your bachelor's as well as your master's, and in the past, you've worked not only on the industry side, but the academic side too. Can you tell me what the first inspired you to go into industry right after college? So I really, you're right, they're, they're very different. Um, industry is really um, geared towards uh, bench to bedside medicines, whereas academic institutions, they're great as well, um, but they're more discovery based uh, at a very early level. And my desire to go through the industry world, if you will, in, in biomedical research and biopharma was geared towards helping people uh, more immediately where I could see myself uh, enjoying that contribution. Wow, I'm happy that you're like able to help people right away. So kind of now on the flip side to the question I just asked, just prior to joining BMS, you were on the academic side at Princeton. Can you provide our audience with some insight as to what that was like? What was your role and responsibilities? Well, working at Princeton University was a great opportunity. I was in the compliance office, so I worked in regulatory compliance. And the beauty of that was actually being able to help young researchers such as yourself develop protocols both with uh, research that was being done in the wild as well as in the laboratory. So I was able to work with uh, students that were developing protocols, working with invertebrate space species such as mosquitoes, all the way to larger animals um, such as zebra out in Africa and understanding their environment and what uh, the risks were that for them in their environment. So it was really such a wonderful opportunity, but again, very different than industry or in biopharma. Yes, it does sound very different, but I think it's so cool that you got to work with so many things by helping out these students. Um, so now that brings us to where you are today. Uh, you are at Bristol Myers Squibb, a global biopharmaceutical company. Can you tell me more about BMS? Yes, in a nutshell, its mission is to discover, develop, and deliver innovative medicines that help patients prevail over medical diseases. Thank you for explaining. Now, as Director of Global Technical Operations in Veterinary Sciences at BMS, can you provide me with an overview of your duties? Yes, I can. 
Katie, I am prim primarily responsible for the oversight and governance of an aligned and strategic animal husbandry care group. And we are in an accredited animal facility. So some of my responsibilities include mentoring and managing facility supervisors, operations, technical staff that care for the animals that we work with and every day. Um, I also help uh, provide performance management and help staff in their career development as they progress through their careers. Um, I provide strategic oversight for the facility operations, which include the personnel, the equipment, and space resources. Um, all of this is, is a big part of my job and it has a lot of different components, but that's the basic of my job responsibilities. Wow, it sounds like a lot of work, but it sounds very exciting and interesting. So Ms. Strader, since you've worked in both industry and academia, can you describe some of the key similarities and differences? Right, so the certainly the key similarities include the desire to you know, discover new uh, research, new strategies for whether it's uh, human medicine, whether it's uh, looking at our environment and developing new ways of doing things so that we're a more conscientious community. Um, those are the key things that we have in common with a lot of the biopharmaceutical companies um, and academia. And then some of the differences, as I had mentioned before, are certainly uh, the very basic level of science discovery in academia, um, as opposed to you know, the delivery of medicines to serious illnesses. Wow, that's really fascinating. It's crazy that there's so much similarity yet difference between the two at the same time. And I can see why it's difficult to choose between the two. I know that we first met because of the American Association for Laboratory Animal Science, the AALAS, and the Celebrate the Mouse contest. Ms. Strader, can you tell me more about your involvement in AALAS? I sure can. So ALAS is what I call it, um, is a group of professionals that advance responsible laboratory animal care and the use to benefit people and animals. Our vision is also to educate the work, the world on transformative value of animals and humans and their partnership in biomedical research. This association is a membership of professionals that are employed around the world in both academic, government, and also private industry who are dedicated to the humane care and treatment of laboratory animals, as well as the quality research that leads to the scientific gains that we benefit from. Um, and ALAS also provides educational materials and to the laboratory animal care and professionals, they're a great resource. They also assist us as we look for resources for publishing uh, scholarly journals and supporting animal research in general. It serves as definitely the premier form for laboratory um, animal professionals such as myself. Wow, I made, I made it harder for myself by calling it AALAS. <laughs> <laughs> it must be uh, really fun to be like giving back to the community in a way. Um, so we've covered a lot today and it sounds like you are someone who is always on the go, but are truly an inspirational woman in STEM. So is there something you would like to tell our audience as they explore STEM and careers in STEM? Yes. Just like me, don't put yourself in a box and stick with what you think is the only alternative in STEM. Look at all sorts of opportunities. Meet up with a mentor, discuss the things that you enjoy, the things that interest you the most, and you will find out that there is a wealth of opportunities and careers within STEM, um, more beyond what you would ever imagine. That's a really great message. Thank you for sharing it with us. So now I'd like to thank my guest, Ms. Pamela Strader. Ms. Strader, it was really great speaking with you today. Thank you for spending time with us. And to our viewers, please join us again in two weeks for another exciting episode and another remarkable STEM professional. You have been listening to Profiles in STEM. Thank you. Katie Covert signing off.